What's up guys, Cass here from Giveaway Studios and on this one I'm going to show you guys how to turn the pieces that you see here on my board into one of these particulate respirators, um, 3D printed and we'll have the files available in the description of the video. Um, now these are by no means uh, replacements for proper um, N95 uh, personal protective equipment, um, but there is a huge shortage of uh, PPE uh, stuff for hospitals and Give Wish Studios and Low Makes, which is the makerspace that I'm a part of, have partnered with our local hospitals to get these out to their medical professionals. And this is just the process that we ourselves go through and putting these together uh, to send out to our local hospitals. So let's get right into it. So the mask comes in three parts or you could say five parts if you count the little 3D printed clips. Now, once you print your parts, it's super easy. This goes in the front. Your filter material goes here and then it gets lashed in place with this that you can just kind of push and snap in place. You'll notice that there are little nubs on the top of this and there are uh, holes to receive those little nubs on the inside there. So as long as those snap in place, they won't go anywhere and your uh, filtration material will be nice and snug. Okay. As far as what we use for filtration material, there are two types of things that we use. We have um, these filters that we've gotten from Ace Hardware Store. I'm sure they sell them at other hardware stores also, but you want to get something that is rated uh, MERV 13 or MERV 16. Anything below that is not something that is meant for microscopic stuff. So these, I believe they block particles as small as 0.3 to 10 microns. So for the first one here, um, it is this guy here that I've taken apart as you can see. So there is a wire mesh on this and what you want to do is very carefully just pry the wire mesh away from the actual fabric until you have you know a large enough chunk that you can just cut off with scissors so as you can see here there's a pretty big chunk missing which I have here that I was able to take off uh, for the purpose of showing you guys how to put these together do keep in mind that with this one in particular, they're very well glued on the edges. So I just sacrificed um, the outer edges of the, uh, the cardboard just so I can access the middle panel. And even in accessing the middle panel, you want to be really careful when taking these off because they're also quite well glued um, to the fabric panel on the inside. So as you're pulling these, uh, the cardboard off of the fabric, do make sure that you're doing so very carefully as to not puncture or rip uh, the fabric so that you don't compromise the effectiveness of the filter, okay? And then for this guy, this larger one, um, it's a little bit easier, albeit the metal doesn't come off as easy, but if you do break it down into small sections, it's a lot easier to take apart the metal than trying to do it from the large sheet. As you can see, just kind of being super careful with it. And you can even grab like a sharp blade to just kind of separate the fibers as you take this aside. And also really do be careful not to injure yourself because once you cut through this metal mesh, it can be quite sharp uh, and can penetrate your skin uh, very quickly. So this is an example of what the large one looks like once everything is taken off of it. Um, the cardboard on the front actually comes off a lot easier than the thinner one that I showed you guys earlier. But this is more, this has more of a papery feel to it and the downside is that the mesh doesn't come off as well. So two different styles same effectiveness so just wanted to point out the differences between the two and uh, as you can see these little guys don't play because they've already ripped a little hole through my glove um, 
but that's fine. The bottom of my hands are still good. Okay, and so for the larger one, uh, when you take off the mesh, it might thin out the material a little bit, so you can definitely feel free to double it up once you're ready. So the first thing we'll do, we'll grab our uh, inner piece here, and we're gonna cut it about a quarter to a half inch more than its actual size. So we'll go ahead and snip this here. Okay, so we're done with that. Go ahead and get on the inside of our piece here. Kind of get this situated. And we're going to try and press and snap it into place. Like that. Like that. Like that. And like so. Okay, good amount of pressure. Make sure you hear that snap uh, to make sure that it is nice and secure. And the front of this is removable. It's a lot, it's a lot easier to remove than the inside for sure. Uh, especially if I didn't have my gloves on, but here we go, okay? And as you can see from the front, it's nice and taut by us putting the insert on the inside the way that we did, okay? And then you can just kind of snap this into place, and that's pretty much it. So now I'll just show you guys this, which is some rubber foam, uh, self-stick weather seal uh, that you can get from your local hardware store as well. So this one is adhesive-backed. But we have found that the adhesive doesn't quite hold it together very well, or at least not for long, especially um, after someone starts breathing inside of it, it starts loosening up a little bit. So we are reinforcing it with some hot glue. So you wanna start at the bottom, and then every inch or so, put a little bit of hot glue, glue it down, keep gluing it down until you get all the way around. And once you're done, we'll go into how to put the straps together. So I'm going to fast forward through those steps and catch you guys for the next one. Okay, once you're done putting your strip all the way around, just remember to go back in and pull a little bit of hot glue here because depending on how well you actually got this part in, you might want to seal this up a little bit because that is the area that we've discovered that that's where we end up with some uh, leakage. So you want to reinforce the bridge of the nose there a little bit. But that is pretty much it as far as that's concerned. So now let's move on to the straps. All right, so for our strapping, uh, there are different ways that you can do this. So this is one where we have this that's hot glued here, hot glued here with two pieces. And then we use the little clasps here so that it's adjustable in the back. Okay, that's one way to do it. Um, if you are having trouble pin printing these because they're too small, you can also just hot glue or just tie them off. This example, everything's hot glued. Obviously, this is fitted to one person. It's not adjustable, but you know, it's one person's mask, so they don't need it um, to adjust constantly. And if they did need to, they can just cut the strap, shorten it, hot glue it again, whatever the case may be. Uh, the way that I'm going to explain it, I'm going to need some elastic waistband. And make sure you look up to see if the elastic that you're using, if it contains any latex, because a lot of people have allergies um, to latex. So what I'm going to do is cut uh, two strips of this at 18 inches. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is run the elastic through the middle, okay? If you look at your little plastic piece, there are three columns on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is the very middle column, the one that's on the outer part, I'm gonna run this through it, okay? And leave about a quarter of an inch of it right there off to the side. And another thing that you can do, because this can potentially slip out, um, you can put a little dab of hot glue on your piece and just fold it on itself that way it becomes too thick for it to do so okay so just a little heads up there and then for this next one 
I'm going to pick a side of my mask. Let's go here. I'm gonna run this through the loop. Okay. And then I'm gonna run it under and over the first one that I just did. So now I'm going through the outer little columns on the inside there. Okay. Like so. Now, I can bring this all the way there. And now that we've done this, we can just bring this over to the other side. And we can either tie this off or just hot glue it. So I'm just gonna hot glue this to its own end. Like so. so now we have one piece. And as you can see, now this is adjustable can either make it larger or smaller okay and we're just gonna do the same thing for the other side as always careful not to burn yourself especially using the hot glue uh, use gloves if you have to there it is and now we have an adjustable mask and this is what it looks like on as you can see pretty tight fit you can go ahead and just pull and slide to adjust you can tug towards to loosen uh, so this technique is super easy to adjust on the fly um, but the other techniques work just as well so that's pretty much a wrap for this one guys i hope this one was useful if you guys want more information on these 3d printing efforts you can visit lowmix.com forward slash covid dash 19 dash response um, the website is constantly being updated um, with all of our efforts. If you guys didn't notice, I didn't really focus too much on the specifics of the materials that we're using because as I mentioned before, this is a prototyping process and these things can change. We might find a source that's more reliable. We might find things that are more efficient and that can change within the next couple of days to even the next couple of hours. So do check the website often. If you want to participate or even donate, I believe there is a link on Lower Mix website to do so. Uh, if you would like access to the files, you can find those on givewavestudios.com forward slash freebies. Uh, those are also available via Dropbox and Google Drive links on the Low Mix website as well. So yeah, this has been Cass from GiveWish Studios. You guys stay safe out there, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.